G'day invaders, I'm Mean Machine Dean, and you're currently watching Synth Spaces. Synth Spaces. G'day invaders, welcome to Synth Spaces, and this is a look at the Sega Mega Drive, uh, I was going to say Ultimate Collection, the Sega Mega Drive Mini. Uh, the console just came out today, got my hot little hands on it, and here it is. So, um, the box is really tiny. <laughs> it's not square, which I thought was kind of interesting, um, but it's super cool, and I've unboxed it today. And yes, it doesn't come with six button controllers. I get that. So what I did is I went and got bought one of them as well. So I actually am planning to get a Japanese uh, Mega Drive eventually. But for now, that's what I've got to use. And I will have two more six button controllers coming once I get my Japanese Mega Drive. Hopefully that will come soon. I've got to follow that up later on. Um, but... I'm not going to do an unboxing, plenty of videos doing that online, uh, and I'm also, I'm not going to do a let's play or any of the games. Are you thinking, well what the hell is he going to do? Well, I have set up last night a breakdown of all the Mega Drive games. And here we are. So this is the Mega Drive games on the Mega Drive Mini, and I'm going to rate them all. So. Are we going to get ready for this? <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's the six button controller that comes with it. And the mode button on here takes it back to the main menu. It acts as a reset button. So we are going to get started with the very first game. And this game um, sits at the top, no matter what sort order you do. <laughs> so I'm going to get this in alphabetical and we will go with Alex Kidd first off. Um, I don't think S is a good um, representation of an ultimate game for the Sega Mega Drive. So I reckon we should get rid of that and bring this little guy over and put him right there. There we go. So that's the cream of the crop. <laughs> and F for fail. We'll get rid of that. And I'm going to put this guy in there as a representation of the really crap games that just have no business being on this list all right so alex kid everyone bags out on this game and i kind of like it <laughs> so i'm going to be a little more generous to it than what most people um would be i have to put this in c because i liked it it was it was bringing something over to the mega drive from the master system yes it failed it could have been better but it was not a bad effort and it's not alex d kid okay lucas just 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 so the stop next that game is alicia dragoon uh game arts brings you an action shooter feature alicia uh a girl who controls lightning wield order aiming lightning and the power of four summons to fight off attacks from all sides and blaze your path to the sky temple right cool story guys um a lot of people don't know about this game but i was actually given this game for free when working at sega it's one of the very few games that was given to um, me um I, I just thought it was trying something different and it was actually kind of cool and it had role play type elements where you got power-ups and you gotta level up your abilities so i think it's a solid c <laughs> We've got another C. I hope we're not going to have a whole stack of C's, but that, that game sits right there in the okay. C list. So, Altered Beast. Save the kidnapped goddess Athena in this beat-em-up action game. Now, I would like if they gave you more details on each game, actually. That's a that's a downer on this. Is it goes in D, and I'm locking that in. Mate, this is a C for sure. <laughs> How's it a C? I do not agree. It's a D. It doesn't age well. You play this once, you won't want to play this again. There wasn't enough variety. It's too slow and tedious. 
um and i think that it had potential but it just it just didn't do enough and it was the bare minimum i think it was like a two meg game so very very small game in memory as well and I, i'm so surprised that this made it to the actual console this, this is such a good game we're gonna whack mickey mouse castle of illusion in an a spot just misses out it was a solid title at the time when it was released but just misses out on being in the uber best of all time category so i'm hoping that i'm not losing too many people on that one then the next game in the list is castlevania which i've played a little bit but i'm not a castlevania ga game gamer and a lot of people oh they rave on about this well, you must whip it i i just the castlevania thing to me was more of a nintendo sort of property there were some cool effects though there were some cool things going on in the background i must admit s put it at the top well if this was your list tommy that would be happening i'm gonna put this in the a group pending because i might play it and think it's really crap or i might play it and think oh yeah it's gonna be awesome but from what i know about this game and from what i've seen of it it is going in a we used to joke that if because we had loads of these copies of this game lying around at the hotline and we used to joke that if you had a whole box of this and left them outside no one would steal them <laughs> but it's a good game but it's just not uh you know it's just columns yeah, switch over I, I, it goes right alongside its mate there altered beast which was another game that was being given out for free back in the day uh and yeah it's it's just meh a meh title meh so the next game on our list this is going to take a while <laughs> comic zone oh god this is so hard to rate I know it gets a little love and I know a lot of people rave on about this and it's a Sega it's an STI game you can tell that they put a lot of effort into it <sighs> comic zone is C also uh, great game but super hard yep all right I've made up my mind it's going in C and that's not C for meh it's just C because it had potential, but it just didn't execute very well. All right. I hope we've got enough room in C. <laughs> so this is Pro Protector. <laughs> otherwise known as Contra. And if it would hurry up and play it as the game. So, if you like Gunstar Heroes, this is like a majorly hard version of that. Um, and the story goes is that they they made this to try and compete with Gunstar Heroes because it, Gunstar Heroes was made by ex Konami staff, and Konami were like, "We don't need you anymore. We can do special effects too." So they made this to try and just show off the fact that they're quite capable of doing some cool things on their own like it does look awesome that does look good and and this is just a throwback to the super nintendo version yeah pretty cool effects i'm going with c on this one so we're gonna throw that over into the c bracket we're running out of room in c <laughs> And I've played Darius 2. I had Darius 2 on the Mega Drive. So I don't understand why they needed to put Darius 1 on there. So I'm going to whack that in B. Because I think it's a great addition to the, the, the fact that this came out sort of unannounced. Was um, a nice little surprise. So it, it's going in B. We got our first B game.
Now, <laughs> I had an awesome time playing this. Um, my introduction to this game was on the Game Gear. Puyo Puyo. Which, if you change the settings to the Japanese language, this plays as Puyo Puyo, not as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Which is kind of cool. But it's essentially the same game. Um, yeah, I'm not going to mess around anymore. That's going in A. Up you go. <laughs> Dynamite Haiti. Awesome game by Treasure. Is it deserving of an A? No, I don't think so. Although people will disagree with me on this. I think it's it's a solid B. Heading over to to my little tier list. That's oh no 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 you go there. <laughs> Groovy. Love it. I had so much fun with this when it first came out. I was working in Hyper Magazine. Well, not working now. I was contributing. And I happened to be in the Hyper Magazine at the time to submit my articles. And this game had everyone wrapped around the screen just watching the gameplay. Um, one of the classics on the Mega Drive. The fact that it's on the Mega Drive Mini is just a nothing short of a miracle and it's just iconic it's 90s it's just everything about this gaming era that sums up what get the attitude of this era was all about this gets a solid s so we got our first s rated game and so our first solid s rated game or Sonic rated game is Earthworm Jim. Stream to the other, I think. I'm gonna hit enough of Earthworm Jim. But yeah, solid. We got our first mwah, pick of the bunch, cream le crop title. But now we move on to Echo. <laughs> oh, Echo. I have a love-hate relationship with this game. Totally true. Echo, the ultimate gaming experience. Mate, you gotta give them a hundred percent for creativity and originality. Um, it was great at the time. I just didn't enjoy it, personally. And it's a C. It's gonna fall into the C. It's, it's dangerously close to going into D. I just don't like it. 24 megs of power! <laughs> Alright, well they tried to do something different. Okay. Well we got some more memory. Let's let's make some animations. I kinda like this. So, for those who don't know, Eternal Champions is a 24 meg game. It uses the six button controller. It was coming out at a time when Street Fighter 2 was just dominating the market. So they figured, oh well, we, we gotta have just a fighter because that's really good at the moment. That's a big thing, right? Um, um, yeah, I'm gonna go back into the tier and we're gonna whack that in C. It could have been a D. Uh, no, a bit, I don't know. You could put that one anywhere. You'd be right. It's just it's just a neither here or there title, isn't it? So, yeah, C for that one probably lurks in the D territory. Only because there's so many great games on the Mega Drive that could have made it, and this has taken up a spot. And that's kind of what I'm looking at this game, thinking, yeah, they really probably could have gone with something else. All right, so the next one is Ghouls and Ghosts. Where do you guys stand on Ghouls and Ghosts? Me, personally, I freaking love the game. <laughs> you have to respect this game. And, oh my god. This is such a classic. 
and a lot of people can't stand this because they're not good and I get that but man the game is so good one of the first Mega Drive games too this is like one of the earliest games and Sega themselves did this not not Capcom yep yeah, now that's going straight in the pool room that's going right up to the top we have got ourselves another <laughs> let me get to the sound effects oh come on another a or s ranked game right at the top ghouls and ghosts i don't think too many people would argue with that and if you do argue with that you're wrong ghouls and ghosts is an a no 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 it's a moi top no 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 it's a it's the top that's where it stands the next game is golden axe Uh, Golden Axe. Played the heck out of this. The Game Boy Bryant says, This along with Sonic 2 were my first Genesis games I ever played. Golden Axe is definitely in there, so it's a goddamn, it's goddamn good. Tommy's in with it. He's, he's coming in all swinging. My only thing that makes me just go straight away putting into S is, is it too short? That's my only hesitant on putting it in S. Is it too short? It sold many consoles, this game though. So, this was one of, the, one of the first games I bought, by the way, for the Mega Drive. I had the Japanese version until some smuck stole my copy. So I'm still trying to track down a Japanese copy of the Mega Drive version of Golden Axe. Love the artwork. The color um, instruction manual was just like, I spent ages looking at that. I, I have to put this in S again. I am doing it with slight hesitation only because the game is so short, but it was just such a hoot to play with two players. Yeah, I, I think it's got to go in S. So, we have got ourselves another S game going right up there in the pool room. <laughs> wow, it's, it's, look, it's turning out to be an interesting list so far, isn't it? But, moving out of that now, the next game... Oh god, it gets better. This is such a good compilation. Gunstar Heroes. And I've got the original of this, and I had to buy a converter to play it. Stupid grey importing. You had to go to grey importing to get games in. Region lockouts and all that nonsense. Um, just for out of curiosity, I wonder if anyone here watching at the moment has actually played this. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time is about 20 minutes long. Oh, we're talking about Golden Axe, okay. But Gunstar Heroes is certainly not a 20 minute job. It is such a hard game. And this came out at a time when there was no save states. So that made that kind of frustrating. But now we can save, we can simply um, save the game and continue on our merry way so treasure was such a good game uh, company now really pushed this console they made it do things that you never thought it could do so gunstar heroes i think we're going to get ourselves another addition to the pool room kitties it's going right up the top So we got ourselves another S rated game. These are the cream of the crop. Gunstar Heroes joins Golden Axe, Ghouls and Ghost, and Earthworm Jim. We're going to the other end of the um, gene pool though now. <laughs> Kid Chameleon. Yeah. Again great concept 
poorly executed, I think. Yeah, I, I just think that it's taking up a slot in this list of games on this Sega Mega Drive Mini that it could have gone to a better game. So I'm going to have to rank it as a C. So it's going over into C, I'm afraid. I just don't get enthusiastic about that one. It's not a bad game. It just had potential. It's another Echo. <laughs> this is a not a hidden gem. A hidden gem. This is a lost gem. This is a game that um, was just raved on about at the time. Landstalker. Like, in that era, all the magazines were showing screenshots of this from Japan. And I didn't know what they were saying, but I didn't care because those screenshots just looked awesome. Um, it even fe features a brothel, <laughs> which they took out of the Western version. <laughs> and they changed it for you getting milk or something. <laughs> so, that goes into B. It's a solid game. Just something holding it back from being a, a, an A. So, I, I honestly don't know much about this one. Another treasure game. So you got to give it a looking just because of that. So Light Crusader on a Mega Drive. Kind of came out too late in the Mega Drive's life cycle for me to be paying attention to it. Because I was moving on to Mega CD and concentrating on Mega CD in that era. Listen, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to throw this one into the C bracket and move along because otherwise we're going to be here all night. And I, I just think it, it's like C, plausible, maybe a B if given a chance. Um, we'll move along. Previously unreleased in America um, in physical form. So yeah, you got uh, Mega Man 1, 2, and 3. Mega Man 2 is probably the one to go and check out. I hate number one. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It's weird hearing this track on a Mega Drive. I mean, talks to buy a, a real copy of Wily Walls. Really interested in it. Yeah, I'm interested in it. I'm willing to give it a chance. Nah, it doesn't sound the same, hey? Like, I like it, but um, the NES version is just hits that sweet spot, and this misses um, it. I, I think you have to put this in B, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think it's overly hard for the sake of being overly hard, but it's a solid. It's great to see that this is on there. Um, I I have to put this in B, simply because of the respect that it's got in the gaming community, and I just need to get good. I think, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a punish to play if you're not used to the series. Previously uh, not released physically, it came out on digital format only translated so it was only a um released in japan in japanese and i love wonder boy in monster world and this has got all the aspects of those games except now more stuff i'm going to call it you guys are not going to agree again i don't care <laughs> I'm putting this in the S bracket. It is so good. You guys have got to get onto this. Uh, for me, I just enjoy this type of gameplay. And you're building up your character. You're getting more hearts to to try and get into. It's kind of like Metro Metrovania style gameplay mechanics. Um, and it's a game that not many people have had the honor of playing. And it's it's worthy on, on uh, anyone's list of games to play. Oh, it's even got a Star Wars crawl. Fancy that. Going in the S bracket. This is my list. I do what I want. 
<laughs> so that's another one that's added into the S bracket. Uh, S bracket is looking very the good. Next. Uh, oh man. <laughs> I'm going to run out of room. Seriously, this is good. Um, but I, I went out of my way. I thought I had a reasonable price too. I was so surprised to get this for 50 bucks boxed. Um, when I've seen it previously go for up to $200. Huge game. Great way for this series to end. But it sh Sega needs to come up with a six. I really hope that... A uh, six. Is this... No, this is four. I really hope that they come up with a sequel. Five. So, I don't know if anyone here has played this, but... Um, there's no... I don't even question this. This is going straight into the pool room. Right at the top there. So we've got ourselves another <laughs> another S rank game. We're moving on to Road Rush 2. An EA game, no doubt. Wow. How the heck did that get on here? And a good EA game. And I used to spend hours on this. So this goes straight into the S group. S group's getting crowded. <laughs> so we've got another S group game. It goes right up to the top. I'm glad that EA at least contributed one game. Would have been nice of them to do more, but, you know, we'll take Road Rash 2 into the S group. Shining Force now. Shining Force 2 is the one that everyone raves on about it. But... They decided to put Shining Force on for some reason. It would have been nice if, again, if they had to put... I, I, This is my only gripe with the Mega Drive Mini. Why did they have to hold back on so many of these games? This is very much a, in the same vein as Fire Emblem. If this was Shining Force 2, it would have been up the top. It would have been shoved in the S group, but it's not. It's just shy of it. So we got um, an A game. It goes into A. Which is, you know, again, it's a solid game. It's just not quite, not quite S rank. Shinobi free. Ah, uh, come on, boys and girls. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I like this game, but all right, this is a controversial um, opinion that I've got. I prefer the look and the feel of Revenge of Shinobi more than this but i know that so many people love this particular game because it had it brought so many more in the way of uh, more features in the way of move sets wall jumping and that sort of thing i just didn't when it do you know that expression that when um bonzi jumped the shark but when a show's running out of ideas it jumps the shark i kind of got the feeling that this game jumped the shark a little bit when they introduced surfing like surfing ninjas come on it's not realistic but come on um i gotta put it in a uh don't kill me i'm almost tempted to put it in b but it's just so liked and i guess i could get into this game if if i gave it more of a chance I, i'm i'm putting this in a i think it's deserving of an a slot it was hard for me to do that but I know that if I put it in B, like I don't, I don't um, pander to popular opinion. But at the same time, I'm not a total bastard. <laughs> the next one, Sonic the Hedgehog. Have you heard of it? Sega. That was the first time that I ever got to hear the Sega chant. That was also the first time that I found out that Australians were pronouncing. Sega, Sega wrong, and it's running at the 60 megahertz speed, and it looks beautiful. Except I have just noticed it doesn't parallax, multi-parallax the clouds. Or was that mm, Sonic 2 that did change that up? Anyway, I'm nitpicking. This is such an awesome game. Um, 
And and you know what? It's one of these games where I've played it so much and I still don't get sick of it. I don't get sick of the music. I don't get sick of the character. It's an iconic game in it's such an important game in Sega's history. And I'm so I feel so privileged to have been part of Sega's history at that very moment and got to see this game um when it was just fresh coming out to see this game and play this game before release is an is an honor i'll take with me to the grave and it looks so good on this like seeing this in hd i've played hd versions of this in the past on uh compilations this looks terrific it really does look awesome Nah, it's going straight it's going straight to the top like as if that was going to go anywhere else boys and girls come on yeah <laughs> so it goes straight to the top so we're now got our eighth entry to the top and guess what's next you know what's coming up <laughs> all right i mean if we just played sonic one what do you reckon's coming up after sonic one that's right sonic two boom boom we got another s game the amount of trickery and and um R&D that had to go into making this split level and and just other they really did try to push and milk the Mega Drive in ways that no one else had done prior and I get that a lot of people don't like the two player squashed up thing but you got to remember that when this came out having two players play have their own little real estate on the screen and to play competitively against each other it meant that little baby brother didn't just get thrown a controller and played tails all the time well you could do that as well but they, you could play competitively against each other for the first time in a sonic game that was big and this is this this is one of my most iconic favorite levels of all time the music the look of it i just remember seeing this on the the preview version um that we got given to us at sega seeing this for the first time it was just like holy crap they didn't screw this up they've really nailed it and it was uh, it was a great feeling of relief when we got to see sonic 2 to know that they they didn't fail us when they developed this game i can't i can crap on all night about this one but yeah it's it's going guess where <laughs> Going straight to the pool room, boys and girls. Right next to its buddy there, Sonic 1. <laughs> As if that was going to go anywhere else, yeah? Alright, so we're going to move along. We're getting to the tail end of this now. Now, Sonic Spinball. Oh, wow. What do you do with Sonic Spinball? First Sonic game to come out that made you go, yeah, they didn't really do it right, did they? I, I do like the game. And again, it's it's another case of great concept, but poorly executed. Right, so Sonic Spinball. Hard game. It's another Echo. So I think it sits right alongside its Echo friend there in the C category. Great, great concept. Just needed more polish. I, I reckon, seriously, though, that this is a game that could... No, 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 not D. My God, reading's hard. Um, this is a game that, if given a little bit more research and development, could have been a solid A. Yeah, I wouldn't say S, but it could have been a B or an A, but it sits there in C because they just had to rush it, didn't they? I have to take my rose-tinted goggles off for this one and look at it subjectively. I freaking love Space Harrow. You got no idea. I'm so gutted and hurt that there is not more games in this franchise. But it is a product of its time, of its era. I get that. And this was just like a really phoned-in version. Looking at it now... I can see why people look at this and go, yeah, this is just a tech demo. But at the time, 
I spent freaking hours on this game. You got no idea. It was the first game I bought on the Mega Drive. This was my Sonic. This was my Altered Beast. This was my Columns. <laughs> I have to be realistic though. I'm looking at B and C. And that's another thing. This game introduced speech in a way that no other game I had ever heard before had hand on a home console had done. This um, just really sounded crisp. Guys, where are we going to put this one? I reckon it's going to go in C. We'll move along. It's a C. I mean, it's a personal favorite of mine, only because of sentimental reasons, but I'm man enough to admit that that's not good enough to go any higher than a C. So, back over. Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Super Duper Edition Remix Extreme. <laughs> So this was the game that came out for the first time uh, on a Sega platform and that people were calling up the hotline, Sega hotline, for ages asking, when's Street Fighter 2 coming out? And it took so long for this game to come out, but it was because of this game, it single-handedly was the reason why we got one of these, a six-button controller. And this was the best part to, of this game coming over, was to see the development of a nice, refined controller as opposed to the sick, the free button controller that we were used to beforehand. So, it was a big enough game to change hardware. Not many games do that. But the question is, how does it run on Mega Drive? <laughs> We've got guns going, spamming the S button. S, 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 S. We are going to throw Street Fighter 2 Special Edition. Over in the S spot. I do think it's deserving. It's not as good as the Super Nintendo version but only because of my personal taste in the sound. But it plays the same. It has more features than the original Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo. And it just... I mean, it, it looks brilliant for a Mega Drive game. This console was not made for this kind of game. They managed to milk the Mega Drive and get it to do things that it was never designed to do. And for that, I think it deserves... And it's just playable as heck. And it's hard. <laughs> so, it is uh, another game in the S category. The few up there now, isn't there? Streets of Rage 2. Where do you think this is going to go? If you are sitting there wondering where I'm going to rank this, then you are a potato. You have no idea. Of course this is going to be an S rating. It's not even a question. This has to go in S. Besides Sonic the Hedgehog, no other game has music that gets me emotional. Oh god, I love listening to that. Cool story is that I got to play this in advance, ahead of time, in a beta. Just level one, but that was all it took. And hearing kids on a school on a bus on the way to work to Sega, re the kids behind me were reading for an EGM magazine, talking about how cool Streets of Rage 2 was going to be, and I pull out the ROM and show them. I can guarantee you guys are going to love it. I've played it; it is awesome. And they're like, "What the hell is that?" This kids is a beta a rom chip set <laughs> an eprom of an unfinished version of streets of rage 2 is what i told him and th this game i just and the fa i don't own this 
That's the biggest crime here because I've got it on so many compilations. I need to track down a copy of Streets of Rage 2 one day. It's just going up in price. Anyway, let's not mess around. This is going right up the top there. So we got ourselves another S rank game. As if that was going to go anywhere else though. Really? Yeah? We've got Strider. What do we do with Strider? So Strider, when it came out, was being pumped up and hyped by EGM magazine. Uh, and it was a major game release for Sega at that time. But I just don't know if... I just don't know if this game holds up in 2019. I gotta put this in a C. Could have been a B, but I do think it's a C. I, it, it, got, it really kills me to put it in C, though. Because how big the game was at the time. If 2000... Sorry, if 1990 version of Brian was to see what I'm doing now and putting this in a C ranking, I, I would be bashing myself up. 1990 Brian would be bashing 2019 Brian up. Alright, this is a little weird. Super <laughs> Fantasy Zone. What do we do with Fantasy We're Zone? trying to decide what to do with Opa Opa and <laughs> Super Fantasy Zone. It's super playable. I love the arcade style graphics. Um, guys, I'm going to have to throw this into B. I do think it's worthy of a B. I know a lot of you won't agree. <laughs> I think it's worthy of a B spot. But it's not a good it's not a good version of the game. The music is it has a, um, I like the music, but I can understand why some people don't. So where does this game sit um, on this list? It's an E. It's an E from me. It's very close to being a fail. The only thing that saves it is the fact that it's Tetris. It's just a bad version of Tetris. Kind of funny, though, that a game that has so much law behind it and so many um stories behind it um yeah sits so low on the grade released as um story of four in in uh, mega drive regions and it's done by ancient which is um yuzo kashiro uh, and his company so, you have to prick your ears up and pay attention to a game when he's hit the Very hill. clean and great gameplay. And, okay, maybe not as memorable as Zelda, but geez, they really tried. You got to give this an A. So, for those who have not played it before, if you pick up a Mega Drive Mini... Um, guess what you're doing? You're you're playing the story of four and giving it a try. I reckon you might be onto something that you've never a hidden jam, a game that you've never played before, never realized what what uh, a classic it is. Oh man, what a great series Thunder Force was. <laughs> now, if this was Thunder Force four. I'd whack this straight into the S group. And I'm tempted to put this in the S group, even though it's not Thunder Force 4. But it's not Musha released, is it? <laughs> if this was Musha released, I'd be throwing this in the S group for sure. Nah, it's got to be an A. It's an A from me. I love the music though. 
The gameplay is good. Oh, it is so tempting to put this in S. Four was amazing. That first level is insane. Music that is. Thunder Force Three is an S as well. Brilliant shoot 'em up. Yeah, hearing the music and, and watching the gameplay again is bringing back all the memories. And the the game was being raved about at the time. Now I've got to put this in S. But guess what? We're all, there's a lot of games in that S category. So we've got ourselves another S game. I, I have to cave in and do it. It's its own creature, it's its own thing. Toe Jam and L. Biggest regret on this game. The biggest regret is didn't have battery save. We've got it now with the Mega Drive Mini, but it held this game back at the time. I love this game. I've spent so much time on it, but it didn't have much in the way of variety. Every level was the same. As you stack up and go up levels, they all look the same. Um, plus, it was just, I don't know. I like the game. I love the characters. So it goes into the B category, I'm sorry. And again, it kills me to do that, but I'm trying to be honest. So there we are. It's in good company though. Come on, look at those groups, those games in that tier. Vector Man. Another one of these games where you wonder why isn't number three, uh, sorry, number two on there. Now, is Vector Man a good game or is it just an over, overrated tech demo? Because I do love this title sequence. I gotta give this an A. I just think it's not quite good enough to go into the S group, but I do think it's a great addition. Rock hard game though, but good enough to um, it is good enough to put into the A category. Yeah, Virtual Fighter Two. Why the hell is Virtual Fighter Two on this console? What? Brainiac decided that this was a game to go with on the Mega Drive Mini. It, it has no place on this list. Like, no one asked for this. And it's taking up a, a, a slot on the Mega Drive Mini that could have been taken up with a much better game. Like, we missed out on Musha at least. But yet, this got through. Oh, well, yeah, no, nah, it's going straight in the bin. It goes in the trash can, boys and girls. That is just... You know, I, I just really don't know... ...why this game is on this list. Goes in the bin. <laughs> uh, Wonder Boy in Monster World. Freaking love this game. I gave this such a high review when I rated it for Megazone Magazine. It is a Metro. God, I always screw this up. Metroidvania style game. I hate that term, but it is a term that everyone knows. Um. It is just like Wonder Boy in Monster Land, but better. The music's great. Starts off slow, but if you stick with it, there's a it's a slow burn, but it's a great game. And I love I hate I hate the Western cover for this. But I love the Japanese one. And it's just such a shame that we never got the Japanese cover in the West. But that's another topic altogether. So Wonder Boy and Monster World goes up the top there in the S category because you know why? It is a freaking good game. That is why. And it's so deserving of being up there in that spot.
And we are almost finished with our list. We've only got one more game to the go. Last game in the series. And it is World of Illusion. Illusion Shot Pitches. I never saw that before. I've got um, an EEPROM version of this or a beta version of this game. Sounds different. Plays a little different. Um, but I remember being amazed when I first saw this. And, okay, here's a little did you know fact. The Australian commercial for this game, the footage was shot by me. It was uh, me playing it. <laughs> so, um, it's a shame I haven't got a copy of that. I've been trying to find a copy of this online, but now the game, the, the TV commercial features gameplay footage that was being played by me at the time. Um, but where do we put World of Illusion in this list? Straight up, it's an A. Because it's not... How would you put it? I prefer Castle of Illusion, but I don't hate on this game. I, it's just if you were to give me a choice of this or Castle of Illusion, I'd go Castle of Illusion, but I think it's still good enough to be in the A slot. So there you go. We finally did it. And I'm just looking through. It's kind of interesting that there wasn't many terrible games in in this list. So that's been my look at the Sega Mega Drive Mini and Genesis Mini. And I think that there's more games in that top list than I thought there would be. But there were those games are just too good to not put in that top bracket, in my opinion. Um, your list might be different to mine, but I think it would be... I think most people would have a list where a lot of the games are in the top and not many in the bottom. Unless you just hate on a particular game for whatever reason that most people like. Um, leave your comment section in the comment section down below. What do you think of the games that I've got there, here in this list? Do you agree or do you think that there should have been maybe some games that I missed out on? Am I nuts for missing out on one or two games on, for example, Castlevania? Should that have been an, a, an S game or do you think it's right where it is on A? Let me know in the comments section down below. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'll do more of these kind of videos moving on. Always trying to come up with new ideas for my videos on the channel. Until next time, my name has been Brian and I've been gaming since Spaces. Thanks, guys. Since Spaces.